We need to grow forward so that our tongue can suction comfortably from the tip to the back. Mm -hmm. Growing forward is my goal and, and part of my educational regimen is understanding and helping others understand that our face is is too far back. The thing I worry about with people that mew is they don't look at the other parts and then they get disappointed when they aren't getting results. It is multifaceted. It's the food, it's the body work, it's the, the breathing techniques, it's the muscle tone, it's it's all of it. I mean Welcome to the Face Yoga Podcast. I'm your host, Kari Cordier. I'm a face yoga, yoga instructor, and skincare nerd. My passion is to find ways to help you reach your health and beauty goals for your face and body. I'm super excited to introduce our next guest, Rhonda Holman. This is going to be about her journey, her experience growing her face, bringing the face forward in order to improve airway health, in order to improve oral health, in order to improve the facial profile, the jaw, grinding, sleep apnea, so many things. So we cover a lot in this conversation. Rhonda is a dental assistant and self-proclaimed airway health champion. She is an airway health advocate and she helps educate us on TikTok. You can find her at airway health champion on TikTok, making content to educate the public, educate us all on the importance of tongue posture, on the importance of nose breathing, on looking after your airway health and all the benefits and all of the ways of doing that and, and quite a journey that it is to do that. I really enjoyed this conversation. Very inspiring, very motivational, a great reminder of the possibility of transformation, of how to be a pioneer and listening to that call to action that there's another way, maybe a better, healthier, more comfortable way to live every day to breathe every breath. I really hope that you enjoy this conversation. I hope you find it as inspiring as I did. I want to talk to you about some of the stuff that you've experienced, that your whole journey, it's really inspiring. I'm following you on TikTok and you call yourself the, the airway health champion, right? Well, I don't have other title. Like I'm not a, a myofunctional therapist. I'm not a dentist. You know, like I don't have a bunch of letters. I'm like, well, it, it came down to a point where like, I couldn't, um, share the information directly from me because I was having speech language pathologist come after me saying, you know, you're not qualified to talk about this stuff. So then I was like, well, I can screen record all the stuff that I'm learning and then just share it on a different platform and kind of like just put everybody in one spot. Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense to people who, who need to learn about this stuff. Yeah. 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 Cause it's not common knowledge. Like I didn't know about this until I was 37. Like mm -hmm. that's a long time to go dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah. No so yeah. I mean, let's talk more about that. So I, I do know that you call yourself a recovering mouth breather <laughs> at some point <laughs> in your TikToks you did. Tell us a little bit about how you found out and like how you got here. What was your journey to to learn about all of this stuff about airway health and, and nose breathing and everything. Well, you know, I had been dental assisting for almost 20 years at the time. And I thought every person I see has mouth breathing to mm -hmm. some extent, whether it was when they were a kid or currently. Um, and the thing about mouth breathing is nothing changes if nothing changes. Like you have to take control of your breath. It's not something you could be like, Oh, well today I'll just stop mouth breathing. Like it takes effort. Like it took 90 days for me to stop the habit. I guess it's just like anything else. I mean, it's just innate. But I went to a course on sleep apnea and they spent the entire day talking about CPAP therapy. Not one speaker said anything about why people were getting sleep apnea. And I just was like, well, this isn't cool. Like you're telling me how to put plastic on people's faces or in their mouths, but you never told me why it happened in the first place. Cause it doesn't seem normal. <laughs> you know, like people just don't struggle to breathe while they sleep. And I got lucky that I was actually a patient too. Um, at the time I was grinding, I had migraines, um, my sleep sucked. I got up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night and I'm scrolling on social media cause I can't sleep. And I just, I was having body aches and my teeth were getting flat. And I'm like, this isn't normal. <laughs> like I just went to that course where they never talked about why people struggle to breathe while they sleep. And here I am struggling while I slept. And so, oh man, I was like, okay, I'm going to figure it out. What's the root cause? Where did this whole thing start? Uh, and it turns out it starts in utero for a lot of us. Like when we're not even born, it's crazy. I mean, you look at these tethered old tissues, like people have tongue ties and they don't get diagnosed 
like back in the day, you know, everybody had to breastfeed. Like that was the only way to nourish your child. We didn't have bottles or all these, you know, nipple shields and all this other stuff. So like if, if you were born and the midwife saw that you were struggling to suck your mom's nipple, um, they would take their fingernail, they like this long fingernail, and they just snipped a little tissue that was connecting your tongue to the floor of your mouth, and then pop you right on the boob, and everything was good to go. And you know, like they didn't have all of these pouched foods and processed foods. Like when you were done, like when you were ready for solid foods, like you went to solid foods. Like you started chewing and growing your face because the thing that we know now is chewing stimulates the bone to grow. And muscle dictates bone. And so the best way to understand that is every time you actually chew like whole foods that have a bunch of nutrition in them that, that take effort, um, and then you're growing your face forward. And so that you have plenty of room for all 32 teeth and you're not struggling to breathe when everything collapses at night. So that's the anatomy part of it. But yeah, so I'm like, you know what? If I can prove that you can grow your face and you can get out of the situation without having to require plastic in your mouth or on your face, then I want to try. Wow, that's really bold and courageous. <laughs> no, genuinely. And like, do you, do you feel like you've had this kind of way, like this attitude in your life in other with other like challenges that you may have faced? I mean, this oh, is in yeah. a slightly different direction, but I'm just like to have that, you know, um, like I'm going to figure this out. Like, cause I, I feel like I can identify with that myself when it comes to something maybe, you know, a little bit different, but like basically just like wrinkles and like aging. And, and I, I remember when I started noticing that on myself and I was like, I'm going to look this up. There's got to be something. I don't, I, I, there's got to be something that's not just injecting stuff into my face and having surgery and facelifts like to in order to look you know youthful as you age um and uh, i was like i'm gonna figure it out you know so i can relate to that feeling so that's that's really cool yeah do you think you, you've always had that i'm gonna figure oh, out that kind of spirit mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um if someone else can learn it so can i mm -hmm. and i shouldn't need an outside person teaching me how to use my body like i should I should be able to learn that on my own. Like I, I never have required, I, I guess I've always been independent. Maybe that's what it is like an independent trait. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I can do this. Like I, you know, as long as I know what the problem is, then the solution's super clear. And in order to learn what the problem is, you have to educate yourself. And, um, you know, in airway, it's a little tricky because <laughs> it's all just grunt, like discombobulated. Like there's, there's so many different, providers and educators looking at the problem from their narrow perspective, you know, like ENTs are looking at the nose, um, you know, sleep physicians are looking at, you know, are, what are your apneas and hypopneas? Uh, the dentists are looking at what happened to your teeth? Why don't they fit? Why are they falling apart? Uh, you know, and then you've got oral facial myofunctional therapists looking at like, why are your accessory facial muscles super big? And like, not supposed to be utilized like this. Like what's what, what's up with your swallow? Like, are you, are you moving the front of your tongue? Like, and, and nutritionists, like they're the people that are going to help you figure out why you have so much swelling, why you have so much mucus. Like, why is it so hard for you to breathe through your nose when you lay down? It's just, it's yeah, there's a ton of people mm -hmm. and all of them are important. Um, but we're still at like the stage in the game where it's not super easy to understand when you first understand it <laughs> especially like carrie with you i mean i can't even begin to say thank you that three percent smile okay i never even thought about that until one day i'm like okay wait go back to your rules Rhonda. muscle dictates bone shit if i want my face to go forward i have got to get these muscles toned pulling that bone like i i want it to grow this way so like um, I just, yeah. So now I 3% smile all the time, like literally all the time <laughs> oh. and it's, it's, it's working and it's really helping me grow my face forward. So I want to say thank you. Oh, I, I, that wasn't even on my radar. Oh, wow. Well, you're super welcome <laughs> and well done you because you've, I mean, you know, yeah, I've, I've helped maybe like tell you about it, but you actually have implemented it. And, and I think that's one thing that I'm really drawn to, um, like that really draws me to you is that you've put a lot of these things into practice and 
you know, to be honest, like I think what you're saying about all the different specialists in all of these different areas, you know, that are in these narrow parts that kind of fit together. How do we actually help people or how do people find, you know, the help that they need when it's all kind of divided up and, and it's, it's, it's overwhelming to be honest. I mean, that's how it feels for me. Um, so, you know, for you to, to like go for it basically for yourself, um, in spite of, not really having like, you know, you don't have like one coach or one mentor. There's no manual, right? yeah. Yeah, and you can like be like, this is, you know, do these things and there you go. And then, or you read a book, one book. It's like many books, you know, it's a lot going on. Um, so I feel like it's very much in its, almost like kind of in its infancy in a cultural kind of in a lifestyle way. We, we're, it hasn't quite reached um, that critical point, but I think we're going to get there um, in this space. Like, yeah, definitely like in the orofacial, like when it comes to beauty as well as health, I think it's, it's. Oh kind of for all yeah, yeah for and that's one of the things that you learn is um you know what vanity is you know when and i guess i have a couple things like um the one takeaway i wish i'd have known earlier was look at your insecurities if you were insecure about the shape of a part of your body there's a good chance that your body is trying to tell you something's up like even if you don't know what it is like think about this like you know like my nose. I mean, I always thought if I came into money, I'm getting a nose job, man. Cause like I did not dig my nose and turns out my nose was fine. It was my face that was shrunken. <laughs> so it made my nose appear bigger. And then as you start to go on like these, these, you know, changing your lifestyle and diet and, and these inflammatory markers start to come down and your nose gets smaller and it's more defined. You're like, Oh my God, it was the food. And it was underutilizing my nose. And I wasn't, you know, flaring my nasal valves. Like I just, I, there are muscles in there too. Like there's these little things like find your insecurities. It's your body telling you something when you have pain, it's your body telling you something like it's, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know that I ever would have figured that part out if I hadn't fixed the mouth breathing, which gave me better sleep, which improved my brain activity levels, which gave me the ability to process the information. So it's like, it's totally connected. Yeah, if you like reverse, yeah, you're kind of reversing the momentum in the opposite direction. Like you're just going, you're reversing course. That's really interesting. Yeah, that word of advice, like to follow your insecurities, you know, to listen or yeah. just to listen to them instead of, you know, I mean, I think these days I feel like the common knowledge is like to try to just love yourself, whatever you're insecure about. And I think that you can still do both right? You could still listen to the insecurity and be like, okay, I hear you. I'm insecure about my nose, but then also I love myself, whether or not my nose is this or that. So much so that I want to like follow, like, I wonder what, like, what, what is making me feel this way about my nose? You know, like, um, it's kind of a strange, <laughs> you know, thing, but yeah, absolutely. To follow the, follow the insecurity or just like to listen to it, to pause maybe and not, you yeah. know, just um, ask why, you yeah. know, like, why is it, you know, we think it's like, we always think it's beauty, but a lot of times it's health. And the way we look at people mm -hmm. is we say, oh, she's pretty. Like, I like the comparison when they look at, um, was it Prince William and Kate and they have the picture of them side by side. And you can see that he was a mouth breather just because when he smiles, you only see like eight teeth. And then when you look at Kate, I mean, when she smiles, she's got like the Julia Roberts smile. Like you can see all of them. You can mm -hmm. tell her tongue was suctioned to the roof of her mouth when she was growing up. And she was totally a nasal breather just because of the way her face grew. And everybody says, oh, it's beauty. Well, I think, I think we put beauty as a name to it, but it's actually health. We can see health. We, we call it beauty, but I really think we can just see health. Wow. That is, I love that. That's like... That is very much my, how I look at all of this myself. If we, yeah, if we think it's beautiful, if we consider it beautiful, that's not by accident necessarily. There are some things that can be cultural that are sort of, you know, fashions or trends, but on the whole, yeah, absolutely. They're in the health indicators largely. So, um, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I know for, for a lot of what I teach, uh, in terms of face yoga is, it can kind of really go more into the health direction initially, especially. And I think sometimes people are like, yeah, but like this wrinkle and that wrinkle. And I'm like, no, we need to perfect your mewing, your tongue posture. Like, and they're like, yeah, but I want to work. I'm like, 
this is going to deal with that. Just like this is yeah. like, like this is going to affect your hooded, whatever, you know, this is, mm -hmm. it will come, it will come. Um, you know, we'll do some accessory things right now that will give you more instant kind of changes, but in 10, 25, even three years, if you want, like, if you want to deal with the root of this, yeah, that's why I'm teaching. That's why we're doing tongue stuff constantly. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, in today's world we're we are going against the grain, you and I are, and, um, it's not instant, you know, we're, we're also like buy on Amazon, you're like, put it in the cart, buy now. Um, but you have to understand too, like stop treating symptoms. <laughs> like if, if you learn nothing else from this podcast, learn this, stop treating symptoms, you know, because that doesn't, I mean, you're just going to spin your, your wheels forever. Like figure out why, you know, get yeah. to the root cause. Like he was saying, Carrie, like I, there's always a why. <laughs> yeah. There's always a why. And, and like follow the symptoms kind of, you know, it's like a little investigation. So if you're like, Oh, hmm, my eye here, my nose here. Well, I wonder what, you know, like you might not figure it out right away and it just takes time, but follow that. Yeah, absolutely. Cause yeah, trying to get, get to the root cause. And I, I think one thing that I'm wanting to add to that, you know, is it's quite difficult to understand a lot of this. It's quite difficult to communicate it. Um, and what I mean by this is how our habits, our lifestyle, our environment, our way of living, um, just many different factors that we have around us are influencing the way that our face looks and also functions in terms of our health. It's hard to communicate this, I think. It's tough. Uh it's, it's very tough. Yeah. And and you have to learn to live in a world that didn't change, but you do. Um, and that makes it even harder. Um, especially when you learn about how important the food is. Like I never ate omega threes. Like I never, <laughs> every now and then I'd go to like a buffet that had fried shrimp and I thought I was killing it. Um, now I eat like salmon three times a week and oysters and like as many mollusks as possible. Um, because I realized how important they are for the body and, and, and just looking at our skin, you know, it's like, again, it's another symptom. Like we are what we eat. That is so true. I don't think I ever really got it until I changed the put the stuff I put in my body. And then I saw the stuff on the outside, my largest organ started changing, mm -hmm. like everything changes. And it's shocking. Cause I'm like, I always had like a greasy T zone or, um, you know, pimples around the creases and, and, you know, I just, I didn't understand how to feed that organ, you know, because the only thing I was ever taught was like, oh, you need supplements or this or that. Or, and yeah, you do need supplements when you can't get enough of it from the diet itself. But I always want to tell people, start with the food. You start with the food, always start with food. And what's, I don't want to not say this. So um, when I started growing my face, I decided to stop wearing makeup. There's a couple of reasons. Um, I mean, I, I still wear eye makeup, but I don't wear foundation or powder or blush. Um, one of them was I, I got like into that little rabbit hole of like, I don't know what's in it. Like, I don't want to put that on my organ. <laughs> you know, you start thinking about skin as an organ and I'm like, um, okay, well, I don't want to put, I'm like, oh, but how cool is this? Like, I can touch my face anytime I want. This is amazing. Carrie would be so proud of me. Like without all that goop on, you know, cause there were so many years of my life where I would put the war paint on in the morning and I would not touch my face until I washed it that night for fear that I might smudge an eyebrow or, you know, mess up a contour or whatever crap I was into at the time. But now, I mean, I can massage my muscles. I can stretch, I can drain lymphatic fluid. Like I can do whatever I want. And because my skin's so healthy, like I don't need to cover it up. Like that insecurity is totally gone. And it, it started with the food. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, um, I also stopped wearing as much makeup for sure. Definitely. Um, and now I, I will wear a little bit here and there, like right now I'm wearing some, yeah. but then I'll, I'll forget that I'm wearing some and then I'll just like, <laughs> so be warned anyone who's deciding to stop wearing your makeup for a bit because you're, you know, you're feeling yourself more now. When you end up wearing it, just, you know, you might smudge it, but I just don't care. Even when I smudge it now, I'm just like, yeah. Cause your priorities change. Like yes. uh, I don't, I, I want the fluid draining out of my face. I don't want it sitting here making me get a stuffy nose, you know, like, 
Um, and, and it was funny cause I, you know, everything is backwards when you heal. Um, I remember everybody said, don't touch, you know, don't touch your face. You'll get wrinkles. And I always thought about, I'm like, okay, so all of these people that are pushing like these anti-aging creams and like these superpower moisturizers or whatever, I'm like, what if it's not actually what's in the cream? What if it's me touching my face that's actually doing more of the work? And I got to thinking about that. I'm like, well, shoot, I have, I have beef tallow. <laughs> Let me try and see if, if it's not the stuff that's in the cream and it's actually me massaging the muscles of my face. Sure enough. It wasn't a cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, there are like a couple of, um, I, I want to do some more content about skincare. I think I'm, I'm still so like right now just in like this more health mewing kind of phase, but um, there are a few ingredients that are good. And I think that can make a non-zero effect on the quality of your skin but largely I think it's sort of extra it's you know I think you're right I think lifestyle and just like a like facial care or whatever you want to call it face yoga facial massage all of that um exercises um you know tension releasing and all sorts of things that's gonna have generally a bigger influence I think for sure absolutely yeah, so and it's the movement. Movement. Our whole body likes it, including our face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, movement. exactly, exactly. And a lot of you know, a lot of our neurochemistry, a lot of like our nervous system is here because mm -hmm. we're social beings. So it, you know, it, we want to keep this toned. We want to keep this healthy and fit. Yeah, it's definitely more effective in general and uh, quite empowering as well because you're not dependent on expensive creams or procedures or treatments like it's quite empowering it's you it's like what you decide and how you want to take right? it my rule of thumb is um i won't put it on my face if i can't eat it so i won't put it mm. on my organ if i can't put it in my body yeah and yeah. that would that helped me kind of narrow down what i was willing to put on my organ so um, what so take me through your if you want to share it i mean take me through what your what your facial care regime is in terms of like, yeah, like topicals and products or like daily yeah. kind of thing. I'm sure uh, people want to, I'm sure <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you about like kind of the products maybe and like, like just what you do more superficially to your skin. And then I also want to talk in a much bigger way about the growing your face and like the strategies you've used um, for that. So so yeah, take whichever one you want first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I exfoliate with um like a a redmond sea salt and olive oil and i keep it in a dark jar so the olive oil still keeps its antioxidants in there and its polyphenols because that's what's really my skin really likes the polyphenols um and then i've recently picked up um i don't even know the right term face shaving um so i take a blade um because here's what i figured out is like i'm replenishing this organ and this is one of the most exposed parts of my organ um, through, throughout the years, the elements, the sun damage, whatnot. And so as I'm getting new, fresh skin, I'm not sure the exact, it was like 19 days, three weeks, something you get brand new skin. And so I have been once a week, just exfoliating with like a blade in some of the areas that, um, have the most layers of damaged skin on them so that the new skin can be seen. Uh, I use uh, like two or three times a week. I'll use lanolin. So I'll sleep in lanolin. Um, I use grass fed beef tallow every day. Um, I'll just massage it then when I'm doing my muscle massages and, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome. I mean, what, what Water. Kind of I don't use soap basically. I don't use soap on my face. Okay, cool. And, uh, what's your like face massage wise? Like, do you do in the morning in the evening? Mine's a PM routine. It's part of my sleep hygiene. So every night I take one hour to do, um, the self-care, um, 20 minutes of that is usually working on oral facial myofunctional therapy and then massaging all the tissues, stretching them out, draining the lymphatic fluid before I go to sleep. Um, because this is, you know, my upper airway. <laughs> so I don't, I want to have as much patency as possible because I do have a smaller airway than, you know, somebody who had a fully developed face. I'm missing eight teeth. So there's a lot less room for my tongue in there. Uh, I don't have a lot of wiggle room as far as inflammation and excess mucus goes. Um, once or twice a week, I'll do like full on. I mean, I'm getting in there. Like I'll take the 
the gouache, the steel one, or I take the jade roller and I'm in there for like 30 minutes to an hour. And I go all the way up into the scalp and I'm working all the muscles. And then every night I do, um, I call it at home CST. So cranial sacral therapy. So I use like a foam roller. I, I lay on my head a lot, <laughs> uh, my temple bones. I'm rolling on the back of my head. I do headstands to get the, all the sutures freed up before sleep. And, and you know, it's funny is like, I work on the back of my head as much as I do the front of my head. If you understand like how these facial muscles are attached, it's like, Oh dude, the back is just as important as the front. If I want to release tension here, good, good chance is it's because it's tight back here. And so I think CST and face yoga um, have a bi-directional relationship that I'm super excited to learn more about. Yeah. Wow. That's super cool. Yeah. I've, I've heard about crani uh, cranial sacral set therapy. I haven't uh, explored it too much, but I think it's, yeah, it sounds pretty important and, re and relevant. Definitely. And you're right. I mean, lately, probably half of the time I spend on, you know, my whole, my whole thing as well is doing scalp and back of the neck and side of the neck and, and like massage and stretching and whatever, like all sorts. So I've also, yeah, I mean, the surface area is big here. You know, there's a lot going on. It's affecting all of this. Yeah. I'm super interested in what you're saying about the sutures. Can you expand on that? Like, tell me more about this. Yeah. Like the foam rolling. Do you foam roll like your yes. scalp or? I do. So, you know, is there I someone you follow way. about cranial? No. Yeah. No. Oh, no, you I'm can my own lab rat. <laughs> I, girl, I, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. That's amazing. All right. Yeah. Um, tell me like, what is, yeah. What do you do? This is awesome. So there are, let's see a suture. It's the crown suture that goes from the temples up and around. And then there's another one that goes right down the middle, like where your soft spot used to be. And then there's another two that branch out like a, a V in the back that come around. So you've got the occipital, the parietals, 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 and then the, uh, the other back here, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but yeah, pressure, pressure. So like I'll roll all the way up my spine. And then once I get to the, um, the, like the C4, C5, I'll just lay there and then I'll stretch out all that fluid, the fascia I'm putting pressure on the sutures. And then I'll go to my left, put pressure on the, the temple region here, all the way down below the ear and then the opposite side. And that's when I flip over and, um, I'll do this weird trick. You guys can't see, but <laughs> I'm laying on the side of my head and then I lay on the other side. And that's when I do the headstands too. Um, after the headstand, I like to lean forward and I'm stretching all the fascia in the back of the neck. And I, I just, I roll around my head so much like, and it's just like, you feel it. Like, um, the more you do it, the less awkward it feels. And the more you can feel the discrepancies, like I already know that, you know, most of us are asymmetrical, right? We all like pointed out in our face, like, oh, you know, my left eyebrows higher than my right eyebrow or my right jawbone is thicker than my left jawbone. And you, when you're doing this CST at home, like you can actually roll and you can feel a protrusive area and then you just light pressure, just the, the weight of my head and I'm just laying on it. <laughs> and eventually you start to get that balance. Wow. That's super cool. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's like, I've, I, I like to do facial cupping. I haven't like talked about it all that much on TikTok or YouTube yet. I, it, I will do. Um, but I've always thought, oh, I would just shave my head and just cut my head. <laughs> oh, dude, that would be so cool. Like, if it <laughs> Society standards, I would be on, I'd go with you. We'll do that. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, oh, it's like I can only reach here and then the cups just don't stick. They just don't work. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but yeah. Have you tried cupping your face? No. Or your, no. Mm -hmm. But oh. it makes sense to bring in blood flow to the surface. Like, yeah. I use heat therapy. So I think I get some of the benefits with the sauna work. And then the, I do the cold showers too. So I, I do some of that transdermal temperature change, which, you know, helps bring blood yeah. flow up there too. Yeah. But yeah. Cupping would be really cool. Oh, I love it. It's, it's kind of my like, um, top shelf. Like if I haven't been doing tension release for a little while, or I've sort of like been busy and I have been neglecting myself. And if I just want to like get to the point, 
I do face cupping. Like <laughs> it's just like 20 minutes, half an hour of that. And, you know, I might, I, I've done it where I'll, I'll do like half my face or half of my friend's face or something. And you can tell like pretty yeah. cool, you know, visibly. I should probably make a TikTok on that or something. That would be yeah. really cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, cupping is just like, I think it's, it, it will become bigger. I think it's just, it's too good. It's so, so, so good. Um, and that sort of brings me on to um, just a different like sidebar question, like fascia. I remember you talking about like, like doing some TikToks about you're on your toes and you're like stretching your fascia, your oh, toes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. Oh, also, because, you know, my hour of self-care at night is it's all about my fascia and draining uh, lymphatic fluid. Mm -hmm. And so, and a lot of my CST, like the ones where I'm on the top of my head, I'll put my toes on the ground and lift my heels up. So my foot's like this with pressure on the ground. Because you have to understand the fascial connection, it, like especially in the tongue, the tip of your tongue and your big toe are connected by one piece of fascia. And when you understand that, you realize how important it is to address both ends at the same time. So you get the most fluid movement and stretch. Yeah. So it's, it's fascinating, like understanding the whole, how all the parts equal the whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I just, there's not many people that I, I, I would say, I, you know, I follow a lot of people in this community, this kind of smallish community, and there's just not that many that have knowledge of these different areas and all you know it's like fascia oral health you know airway health breath you know it's like eating nutrition there's just so many sides of it and i think we need people like communicators kind of i guess like us really to be able to um put it all together that. for you <laughs> huh? put what? it all together so it yeah makes sense, you know? yeah exactly exactly so so let's talk a little bit more about growing your face, maybe like the beginning of it for you. So if you were to say, this is what helped me grow my, like what are the major things that you think have have contributed to helping you grow your face? So someone, let's say someone who's listening, who's a mouth breather or a lot of the time a mouth breather who has struggle, like who struggles with, with um, you know, breathing through their nose, who has a hard time mewing, maybe has TMJ, um, you know, who wants to might be more defined jaw or like a different nose or something, you know, like what kind of things should they focus on if they can't get to their appointments or they can't afford them or they don't know where to begin, like in terms of what they could work on today or this week or this month, like what, what were the most impactful things that you did, do you think for, for growing your face? Um, well, I was definitely getting my tongue stronger and perfecting my swallow. Um, when you swallow the front of your face shouldn't move and no one taught me that. They didn't tell me that the tip of my tongue is supposed to stay behind my two front teeth on the top during the entire swallow. Like I was totally grabbing all these muscles up front and I was contracting them to push the liquid down. And that was, you know, it was making my mentalis super tight. I was getting like the dimples, you know, like the, the ego, it's a weird, like it looked like potholes in the middle of my chin and um, learning how to swallow. I mean, that's something you do every day, all day with it, whether it's, everybody thinks of it just as like drinking and eating, but you swallow spit. So this is a repetitive soft tissue dysfunction that impacts the entire front of your face. It makes it super tight and it's definitely not going to let you grow forward. So mm -hmm. that, that was the most, and I always thought about it too. Like, um, professor Mew, <laughs> he, he always talks about when you swallow, it should be a push, not a suck. And I'm like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, so I, I went back to thinking, okay, so Back in the day, we used to drink at the river, right? And so we had to squat. We had to load the liquid, the water into our, our hand, right? It's in our palm. And we're drinking like, you know, we're bringing, you know, our, our hand turns into a cup, essentially. And we're, we're kind of le leaned over. I'm like, I can't suck that way. I have to use the back of my tongue to push the liquid down if I'm in that position. So, um, I think I should do a TikTok on that one, but it's how I learned to truly understand what he meant by push the liquid down. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't have a straw or I didn't have these convenient cups, like how would my body have done it? And, uh, so swallow that's, that was the biggest thing. Like I changed my swallow. Your face just starts to find harmony. Um, mm -hmm. and the food, you know, just start chewing you guys like mm -hmm. find, you know, whether you're vegan or carnivore it doesn't matter like find choose the 
foods, choose foods that make you chew. That is probably the most important thing. And, and the funny thing is when you chew foods, um, most of those foods aren't processed. Like, so uh, inadvertently you clean up your diet because <laughs> you're like, I'm not going to pick the brownie. I want the apple because I'm going to get a way better workout with the apple. And, and so it's kind of like this synergistic um, thing that, you know, helps you eat healthier too. And then understand autophagy. You know, if, if, if you don't understand how cell turnover works and, and how to promote the human growth hormone, um, that understanding that, you know, just if you can make it 17 hours without food, um, you can really start to turn on that human growth hormone so that you can make what you're doing, even if it's not the perfect way of doing it, or you don't have someone, like you said, you don't have access to a provider who's going to tell you whether you're doing it right or wrong it's still going to get you in the direction of producing, you know, healthier bone. That's, I I guess those are the top three. So (laughs) autophagy, just to clarify. So I don't know about this. So please like define, (laughs) define this. What's autophagy? So autophagy happens when a human being goes for a certain period of time without eating. Mm. And I don't know the exact numbers, but I believe it's it's 72 hours. You get like an entire new immune system. You know, some people go pretty dramatic and they'll do like a 30 day water fast. I never did that. Um, And I I totally would never suggest anybody just stop eating. (laughs) I mean, there's, it's literally, it took like a year to figure it out. So when I first started, um, I was doing eating windows. So like I didn't, eat until like 11 in the morning. And I stopped eating at six at night. And the only reason I was doing that, I didn't realize the benefits of autophagy, um, as far as like growing my bone and, you know, making everything healthier, becoming leptin and ghrelin balanced and balancing my hormones, all the other stuff that, you know, functional medicine doctors talk about. I did it for my sleep because I knew that when I went to bed at night, like if I, if I ate past six o'clock, my, I have this app on my phone called the snore what is it? Snore, snore app. Hang on. I know the name of it. It's called snore lab. I think I have that one too, actually. (laughs) When I first started, I was like, um, okay, so if I eat after six, I snore. And then I was really getting into breath work, you know, before sleep, because I wanted to set my breathing pattern. And I was like, when I'm full or when I have food in my stomach, it's really hard to do this five, seven, eight breathing technique. I'm like, what? So I'm like, I, I wanted like, I kind of fell into fasting. <laughs> it was, it was because I wanted other stuff to do. And then when I started feeling better, I'm like, Oh, there's something to this. Mm-hmm. So I think it was like six months where I just had an eight hour eating window. I was like, Oh, this is cool. And then I started learning more. Like I'm not the expert by any means when it comes to autophagy mm-hmm. and, and how to properly fast for everybody. Cause, um, that eight hour eating window, what I did, it was like, I'm like, well, shoot, I can only eat for eight hours a day. I'm going to put in the good stuff. Like I'm going to totally learn to eat for the nutrients so that when I'm not eating, like my body can use that as fuel to fix the parts that are broken. And so, uh, yeah, I would, I'm like nuts and berries and, and understanding like how, how the chemistry of the food is, which is really, really like, I'm still, not, I'm still learning. I'm a perpetual student. Like I'm still learning, you know, whenever I open my eating window, I open it with fat, fiber, and protein. And I establish a great baseline for my gut. And then, you know, eating the cacao and the berries and the nuts and the seeds and the probiotics. Like I don't go a single day without an avocado, uh, walnuts and sauerkraut. Like everything else is interchangeable, but those are staples in my diet. (laughs) And, uh, so yeah, so like six months of the eight hour eating window, And then I tried my first fast, like my first actual fast. And it was one day. So I made it one day and I was like, oh dude, I'm a, I'm a beast. I can go a whole day without eating. Like how cool is that? So like three weeks later, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to start my two day fast. And, and all of this was just to try and reset my gut health, right? It's like trying to like get everything back to the basics. And so I did a two day fast and then three days or three weeks later, I did a three day fast and I was like, yeah, that's too much. Like for me, <laughs> three days was, it was rough. 
Uh, day two, you're not hungry. Day three, you're like, I miss food. And so ever since that, like, I, I feel amazing. Like everything's like my hair got thicker, like my nails got stronger. So I'm like, okay. So now that I've reset my gut, essentially, I, I do like, um, OMADs twice a week, which is one meal a day. Mm. Um, so like I just, and, and the body likes change and it doesn't like consistency. So like, even with my, my supplements that I take, like my vitamin B complex and I take a uh, vitamin D supplement with K and then I do magnesium and, and whatnot. I, I don't do it every day. Like I constantly change it up. Cause I mm. think that's what our body likes. Cause that's the way we used to be. You know, we weren't like creatures of habit where we lived in 72 degrees all day long in clothes. Um, yeah. So like, like two days, I, I, I stick between a six and eight hour, eight hour eating window every day, no matter what. I always open it with fat fiber and protein and, um, twice a week I go 24 hours without eating basically. Awesome. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. That's a really good summary of, of that whole like fasting, intermittent fasting journey. And yeah, that's, that's super cool that like you kind of found your limits and you figured out this, this way that you can kind of do it sustainably. I don't know all that much. I mean, I, I know some things about fasting. I hear about it a lot in, you know, for different things, but what does, so can you, can you kind of like just expand on a little bit more, like the link between what fasting can do for someone, um, with these challenges or with these, with these goals? Yeah. Like, right. how can, I mean, how can I, yeah. if you trace it back to why I was mouth breathing in the first place, it was cause I had a lot of boogers. Why did I have a lot of boogers? Well, there's two reasons. Reason one, I wasn't using my nose as much as I should have. Like I was, I was a mixed breather. So like during the day I'd breathe through my nose and at night I'd breathe through my mouth. And so I realized that nasal nitric oxide is produced on the exhale through the nose. And I'm like, oh, well, nasal nitric oxide is going to help because it's a vasodilator. So it's going to help me decongest. So the more the organ up here, this nose is amazing. Like the more you use it, the better it works. And then I thought, okay. I, I, I got to a point where like, I'm still getting snot. Like I still have to do like, would you take your decongesting at, at night? I'm like, well, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I want to get what's causing the snot. And that's when the food came in. And then you understand like inflammatory markers and how your gut health is all connected to all of this excess mucus. And, and then you pick out foods that like, for me, my top three mucus, pro excess mucus producing foods were, were dairy, uh, gluten, and sugar, white refined sugar. Um, I got rid of those and like my boogers are practically gone now. I mean, I still have some boogers, but they're really squishy. <laughs> they're not like the big hard honking things I used to have when I was a mouth breather. Um, and I, I, that's like a combination of everything, better gut health, better reduced inflammatory markers, less mucus in my body, more, I put more water in now and I actually get to keep it. When you're mouth breathing, you lose like 50% of that water. And people don't realize that, like, just go outside on a cold day and breathe through your mouth and then see how much steam comes out of your face and then breathe through your nose and see how little steam comes out of your face. Like you understand how all these people are chronically dehydrated, even though they're drinking the right amount of water. Uh, it's just, it's, yeah, it's all connected. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> ma that makes a lot of sense. That's, yeah, that's, I haven't really thought about that link as much. I mean, I know that some of the doctors mention obviously like a blocked nose, mucus blocks your nose, can't breathe through your nose. That's quite fundamentally important. Um, but yeah, like really getting into just clearing up the system to, to be able to nose breathe and, and improve it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, did you say something about human growth hormone? Yes. HGH. Yeah. Um, so tell me, yeah. How do you optimize? How have you been approaching that? So I, 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 I thought if I was going to do it, I want to do it right. Like, I don't want to, like you said earlier, I don't want to depend on outside sources. Like I know my body can fix itself if I do the right stuff. Um, and so I understood that at 17 hours, um, you know, I'm starting to release my own human growth hormone and I want to use that to grow my face. The muscles dictate bone and chewing stimulates the bone to grow but having that human growth hormone that you can actually produce in the body. And that's, what's wild about kids. Like, um, it happens when you sleep mostly. I mean, you can, you can synthesize it with fasting, but most of it, like, like kids 
So when they go to bed, um, it happens about an hour after they go to sleep is when the body releases HGH. And so that's why it's so important to get their tongue up and their, their lips closed because you think about that. Okay. So this kid is sleeping with their mouth wide open. Guess which way their face grows <laughs> down. No, no. <laughs> you get adenoid face. Um, so like it's, it's all connected. Like kids grow, they wake up in the morning. They have like sore legs because, you know, HGH was released while they were sleeping and they had a growth spurt. And the same thing happens to your face. Like it's not a different part of your, I mean, it's a different part of your body, but it has the same rules. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. whatever direction. And that's like a lot of people, they're like, oh, I've always slept on my face. And, you know, they have, they have, you know, underdeveloped face, <laughs> like mm-hmm. their maxilla and their mandible or just they're down and back. And it's, you think about that pressure. I mean, you guys, if you wake up and you sleep on one's position, like, let's say I slept on my side with my hand on my face and I woke up, but I have a handprint on my face. Those pressures make a difference in how your body can grow while you sleep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mechanoreceptors, mechanoreceptors. Yeah. Receptors in our body that respond to mechanical forces. We're still led to believe that you can't really change anything past a certain age, let's say 18, 25, you know, like that's it. It's set in stone. And I think people are pretty shocked by the reality that actually you can change a lot after that age. Bone is living. Bone doesn't, I mean, it's living you guys. Like it's, you feed it, you nourish it. I mean, look at people with osteoporosis, you know, when bone stops thriving, like, and it's all about figuring out like the bone growing diet. Like a lot of the stuff I learned was from Dr. Lau, L A. L A U Lau. He's a dentist, but he wrote three books about the airway. The first one was um, 10 foot tiger in a six foot cage. I'm like, oh my God, that's freaking brilliant. Like, yes, a lot of us have underdeveloped faces and our tongue doesn't fit. Like, it was like perfect. Um, and then the last book he wrote, it's like a roadmap how to grow your face. You know, he talks about like collagen precursor diets and, and all of these things that. Like they're different nutrients that you can give your bones so that they're healthier, stronger, and then want to promote bone growth at the same time. Awesome. Well, that's like really, really helpful resources. I'm definitely going to look into that, um, Dr. Lau. That's really cool. I think I've seen on your, t- on your TikTok some stuff. Um, He's hilarious. Cool. He's, his, his one analogy about, you know, orthodontics, like common now for like people to be like, oh, your kid's teeth don't fit. Let's take four of them out and we'll pull the rest back. So they're straight. Um, he's like, it's like going to a bus stop and you know, only six kids fit on the five seater bus. Like, what do you do? Leave the six kid just on the side of the road. Like, does he not matter? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you, so you've lost some teeth, right? Yeah. So they took out four premolars when they put me in retractive orthodontics in my teens, because I had crooked teeth and all they knew at the time was let's take some out so we can make them all fit. But now, now we know better. Well, a lot of the orthodontists are starting to look at it. Like, How about we just grow the house? Like, let's grow enough bones so your teeth fit instead of taking parts of it away. Yeah, so it was like eight teeth. So I had four premolars, plus I didn't have enough room for my wisdom teeth. So I'm missing eight teeth. And um, yeah, I have a really small box for my tongue. So that's why oral facial myofunctional therapy came into my life because I'm like, well, I had this, what I thought was a big tongue, but it wasn't a big tongue. It was just a small mouth. <laughs> yeah. How do, I, how do I get that tongue to grow the rest of my face? And that's the thing, you guys, the tongue grows the face. The tongue is the, the face grower. <laughs> yes. Let's do those tongue exercises, you guys. That's why I'm always making you do these random tongue exercises. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So you've grown your face with eight, eight teeth down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really incredible. So I don't have my wisdom teeth. So I'm four, I'm four teeth down, which I'm so sad about. Like my, I can definitely look back at photos and it definitely made a difference. I mean, it, it's maybe it's more obvious to me, but yeah, looking back, I really wish I knew about this when I got, before I got oh. taken out because I think I could have, I think I could have figured it out and not needed it. But, um, so yeah, if anyone out there is about to get some teeth taken out, just pause and just see what you can do without it. And, you know, I mean, maybe you might still need it to happen. Who knows? I'm not, we're not doctors on this for, for, you know, we're not in your case, but definitely see if you can try to avoid that. Um, But on that note though, that's really incredible. Like, do you feel 
space where they were now. Like that's what I feel. So in the back of my jaws, like on the upper and lower teeth for me, like the, the lines of the teeth, there's like this like space where there would have been the wisdom tooth. And it's like, now I'm just like, oh, it's just this space. <laughs> I know, I know. And you know, it, honestly, like you'd have to go way back to prevent some of the necessary extractions for third molars in general. Um, like I could have lived with my premolars crooked. Like it was vanity and aesthetics from me and my parents that said, Hey, you should go into braces. Cause you'd be prettier if your teeth were straight and your lips could close. Um, but as far as the wisdom teeth go, like even with the bone growing diet and, you know, as I'm doing all the oral facial myofunctional therapy, like, um, when I had my wisdom teeth taken out, I could feel like little potholes where the teeth used to be like, it was faint, but I could feel like a little dip and it's filled in. Like, it's so cool. <laughs> like that just, it just is more fuel for me to keep going. It's, it's filled like in as in you think you've, in. you've grown, um, like you've, it's you've, filled you've, in the extraction sites. Yeah. The bone has. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So we're getting into some really cool stuff now <laughs> because, and you're talking, and you're basically from your experience, like the, the things that you've been doing that you've been talking about for the last, um, you know, almost hour now, those things that you, you, you believe that those things have helped you fill those yeah, because I was feeling something a few weeks ago and noticing something and like I, it felt like a growing pain in my jaw, kind of like it felt like, like back in when I was a kid and I growing pain, it kind of felt like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't like painful, like there's a problem, like there's a sore. It was just like kind of sore and, and I saw some, I don't know. I was like, am I crazy? Like, I'm, I'm really starting. To, I was like, I, I want to talk to Rhonda about this because I don't really hear many people. I would say I hear almost no one talk about this. So there's lots of like mewers, people who've had like, um, you know, oral challenges, issues in their lives on YouTube, on TikTok. But I haven't really talked about like these, this, I, I haven't heard a lot of, you know, about on this side of it. I know for me personally, one thing that I've started doing more of since this whole thing is just more general weight training and more like load loaded body sense, training yeah. to mm -hmm. stimulate growth hormone. Um, and just to help with hormones generally, it's the fountain of youth. I think, you know, like oh, yeah. hormonal control through, through weight training. We want, we need more load in our lives. Literally we're not carrying enough, you know, we're not doing enough, um, loading ex exercises. So it makes sense that it would, it would apply here. Think about it. You guys, if you don't think growing the human face is possible, Find a female bodybuilder, look at their before picture and look at their after picture. Muscle dictates bone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see their face. It starts to become very masculine. They get all this accessory bone. You know, that isn't my goal. Like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want a super square chisel jaw. I just want to be able to breathe better while I sleep. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if the, the front of your brain, like your, your westernized, you know, cultural, whatever beliefs, like say that, that, that bone is stone, look at the female bodybuilder and then tell me you don't believe you can grow your face. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I think it, it gets confusing with the jaw. I think it, when it comes to like, like on a different note with female beauty standards or just like beauty standards generally, because there's a difference between like the jaw, like bone kind of this part versus like like big jaw muscles do you know what i mean and like yeah. having like tension here versus having strong yeah chewing. You know There's I mean? the, it's, it's balance and that's why it's all important yeah i mean that the way you breathe the way your muscles function the way you tone your muscles the way you rest your muscles the way you uh, strain your muscles like it's all this beautiful harmony Mm -hmm. Um, and all of it is just trying to, to help people breathe better while they sleep, understanding that your tongue is getting super floppy and weak and it's choking a lot of us yeah. while we sleep. Yeah, absolutely. So how long Especially did there's not enough room for it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So how long did it take for like, how long have you been doing this? Have you been working on this part of, of yourself? Um, so I started lip taping, I guess it was like four years ago. And then I was working with Bouteka breathing to build up my CO2 tolerance. Cause when you mouth breathe, you just, you have, it's a bigger hole and it's easier. So learning how to breathe your nose is harder. There's more resistance. The, the holes are smaller and you got to slow it down. 
And then once I did that, I started learning, okay, well, if I can change the way I breathe, hmm, I bet I could change my body parts. And that's when I really started. And, and there's so much free education. I mean, I listen to podcasts every day that aren't talking about airway. Like my favorite ones are the most helpful have been like the ones that are anti-aging. And I don't do it because of vanity, but I think of all these superfoods they're highlighting and I implement them to help me grow my, my new bones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all there. Like you just, you have to dig a little until we can figure out how to make it easier to understand. Yeah. And I think that's part of why I'm, I'm doing this is so I want to bring a lot of these experts and just people who are influencing and, and sharing this stuff and like have a platform where we, where we can kind of get into the weeds a little bit more because you know, let's just face it, TikTok videos, it's, it's hard, you know, you have to kind of pick one thing to try to get a little point of one thing across. Um, and people and, are so skeptical, too. They're like, Oh, that would make a difference. And I'm like, the Grand Canyon started as a tiny little river. Oh, I dropped the blueberry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's the consistency. It's the yeah. consistency that makes such a difference. It's like doing a little bit every day and you know, you might slip sometimes, but come back. And um, one, one like generally last ish thing I wanted to talk to you about that's just intrigues me in general is like tools, like tools that you've used to help you with, you know, growing your face. Um, so there's some tools that I've seen on your channel that like, I just don't really understand. And I'm just curious, like your experience with them. And if you can like describe them and explain them. So a couple of them, like the button pull. Okay. Like that, that's one. I'm curious about that. Um, I think there was like a, a, a wafer slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then like, like unilateral chewing. So those are like a couple of examples, but yeah, it's like talk about some of the tools and how these work. Yes. So, um, there's online, um, therapists for oral facial myofunctional therapy. Um, you can, it's kind of like, do I go to the gym or do I buy a gym membership and then hire a trainer? So that's, that's the difference between learning how to use your muscles properly on your own via, you know, books and videos or having someone show you the right way. Um, the button pull is to strengthen the orbicularis, which is the muscle that goes around your wow. lips. Um, a lot of people that are recovering from mouth breathing, they have a very weak orbicularis. There's usually two reasons. It's one from an improper swallow. Um, and then the other one is just from not having a lip seal. So those button pulls are, it's just resistance training, right? It's, it's making this muscle stronger so that it's easier to get my lips to close without to have tension. a lip seal. Yeah. yeah. So th those are like the, the circular muscles around your lips that get weaker. Yeah. Totally. Like, yeah. Your mouth breathing and you know, they're just, they're not being they're atrophy. Yeah. I mean, they're they atrophy. are. Yeah. Um, and a wafer slide and that's just help stimulating like forward growth. So it's like this flat plane you put on your teeth and you just slide your lower jaw forward and backwards to where you're comfortable. You know, you're just extending the ligaments, you're moving lymphatic fluid mm -hmm. and you're just promoting forward growth. Um, mm -hmm. You can try and do it without something in between your teeth, but a lot of times you end up bumping into your front teeth. So it just it's, it helps be more cohesive. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? So, oh, so unilateral versus bilateral chewing. So Arc Therapeutics, they have a website and it's got like all kinds of chew toys for kids. But if you understand that bone can be grown at any age, mm -hmm. um, then you'll say, oh, maybe they're not just for kids. Um, but like for me, my left side is underdeveloped. Nice, nice tip, by the way. I oh, like that. Right? Like kindred spirits. Like I'm not the only one looking at some random stuff being like, hmm, I wonder if I can use this as a tool for, yeah. Cause that's, I do stuff like that too. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, you, you have to understand. So like my left side was underdeveloped. So I had, um, I, I don't do it as much anymore that I'm starting to get more symmetry, but, um, your left side of your jaw or like yeah, so my left side of my face was mm. underdeveloped compared to the right side. Um, and that's probably because I slept on my left side for 10 years straight after my first child. I just never switched. I never went to my back. I never went to my right side. And so, uh, I until that. I got my symmetry back, I was, you know, and it's not a lot. It was like 30 minutes a day, like 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, not enough to stress out your TMJ or anything like that, or cause headaches. Um, just gentle you know, chewing. And it's like just creating that, that symmetry. And then, um, like with, with, I use, I use like a xylitol gum or 
I just recently switched over to mastic gum. It oh, like, yeah, it's yeah. like a treat app from a tree in Greece. <laughs> I, I've tried mastic gum. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I try to do bilateral chewing. So I have equal parts on each side and, you know, to like 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, I'm just chewing to simulate bone growth. And so I do the chewing to send the signals to my face that I want the bone to start laying down. Mm-hmm. And I use the myofunctional therapy, the mewing or, you know, the muscle toning to dictate where I want that bone to go. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And so where, and I guess you want the bone to go like wide and forward, right? Like yeah, this mm-hmm. way and this I, way. Yep. I want it forward because I want to be able yeah. to lay down at night and my tongue can stay suctioned to the roof of my mouth without being without falling like, back and then yeah. yeah collapse. Yeah. Getting in the way of, of breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, yeah, width probably as well, I guess, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, the research is showing that, you know, like a lot of the orthodontists were looking at, um, intermolar width, you know, like how much room does the back of your tongue have to suction to the roof of your mouth? And like with me, I started at 27 millimeters between the two molars, but now I'm at like 29. And, and I which feel molars like I, is that which molars first molars. So oh, okay. It's the one right behind your little guys. And, um, and, and it, it makes sense though. If you think about suctioning your tongue to the roof of your mouth, it's really hard to do when the teeth are closer together. Mm-hmm. And so as your teeth start to, to get wider then your tongue can fit better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think just as important is anterior posterior growth. And that's my mission is to show that that can happen. Like, cause the orthodontist, they have these palate expanders and they could totally make your molars go farther apart. But that's just the back of my tongue. If if I don't have enough room in the front for my tongue to seal, then I'm kind of hosed that way too. Mm-hmm. Growing forward is my goal. And, and part of my educational regimen is understanding and helping others understand that our face is, is too far back. <laughs> you know, yeah. we need to grow forward so that our tongue can suction comfortably from the tip to the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have a similar-ish intermolar thing. <laughs> um, I used like a piece of gum and imprinted my teeth and then measured it. And I yeah, mean, oh, I have one of those too, right here. Oh yeah, my original. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't done mine in a little while. Maybe I'll have to do another one and see it's if anything. It's neat to see. Do. I mean, it's you guys. This doesn't happen overnight. I mean, we're talking like I was very realistic when I started this journey. Um, mm-hmm. I'm thinking 15 years maybe I'll get to 35 millimeters with just muscles, but I don't know. Yeah. It's never been done. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But it could definitely, I think you can like get to a point where your nose breathing, let's say like, Oh, dude, that's the a yes. Yeah. You yes. can do that faster. And, but I mean, if you're trying to like push limits here, you know, yeah, it, it can take longer for sure. And you don't really use the term mewing. Is there a reason for that? Or do you just, I, I it? wasn't taught. Um, like I was always taught oral facial myofunctional therapy and Dr. Mike Mew happened to um, make it trendy. Like, but in in my head, it's still OMT. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean the same principles. Um, but the way I want to look at the reason I call myself the airway champion is because it is multifaceted. It's the food, it's the body work, it's the, the breathing techniques, it's the muscle tone, it's, it's all of it. I mean, mm-hmm. it just, you can't, I mean, the thing I worry about with people that mew is they don't look at the other parts and then they get disappointed when they aren't getting results. Yeah. That's such a good point. I know like for myself, when I'm categorizing myself in, in what I do or what I help people with, it's like, we can call a face yoga mewing coach something. I mean, but really like I'll be talking to people about, you know, their fascia and cupping and, you know, um, br- just breathing and just so many different things. Like these sessions that I'll have in my one-to-ones, for example, we end up, you know, a lot of the time going off into other things because the root cause of what we might be talking about is actually somewhere else. And I just feels disingenuous to be like, oh yeah, do these things. And no, like really let's, you know, we'll do the both. We'll do the root cause and we'll, we'll help with other things as well. So so yeah, absolutely. It's like, we're going to need a name for this space. I don't really know, like, I guess airway health makes sense, but it's also, it's bigger than that. It's definitely like, you know, I think in terms of like the beauty space, a lot of the filler and a lot of the Botox that people get is to emulate, 
like like to make your face kind of look more like one that has that is a nose breather that is you know a mirror or has has good tongue posture and has so we're it's not just like oh well it's just gonna make me feel better no like genuinely like you're you're going in this direction and that other things that, it, that can actually like deal with it you know it's totally it's not just filler and and botox they can't help you breathe better they're they're not gonna help you breathe better yeah uh, at least not in a big big new way so um. So yeah, well, that's really incredible. I I think it's really inspiring what you talk about, what you share, and just to kind of you know bring people on that journey and really hope to like model for other people what is possible for them. Um, so yeah, absolutely, it's really really awesome to hear more about like all of these different things that you've been working on and doing and learning about and um, yeah. yeah. So uh, one day, um, you know, a couple of people keep telling me I need to write a book, um, and I I think I will when I have a little bit more concrete evidence that other than subjective, you know, that it works, um, which I'm waiting for, you know, I've been taking CBCTs, which is cone beam technology. I've been documenting it, the bone growth that way, but I think we wow. should call it, um, the hand guide for recovering mouth breathers and how to grow your face for O2 space. <laughs> <laughs> yes, grow your face for O2 space. Definitely. I mean, that is, yeah, it's super awesome. Yeah, de books. We need more books on this. So, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think documenting your journey and, you know, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take to get all the evidence that we need to for you to write your book. So don't wait too long. <laughs> you know, I used to, so I'm a scientist by training. I used to, you know, I, I was a trained chemist. Um, I just, I know how long these things take. That's not even in the same field. It's more medicine and stuff, but it takes a long time. It's slow. It's slower than bone growth. You guys, it's, it's slower than changing your breathing in my circle. Like I work with a bunch of medical providers, so they want studies. Show me the studies, show me the, the numbers. And, and, and I want to get to a place where people are like, there's a problem. Even if this doesn't work, it could help. So even if I don't know, under you know, necessarily understand why I'm fasting or if I, if I don't understand why I'm doing these tongue exercises, just do them and see if you feel better. Like, yeah, it doesn't, it, it, it won't make you go backwards. You guys like, just yeah. try. Yeah, exactly. The side effects are like the, yeah, the, the negative consequences are minimal. <laughs> it's like a low risk thing that you can try. Um, on like random now random question when it comes to nose breathing, do you nose breathe when you're exercising? I don't exercise very often. Um, okay. 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 But when I, you, but when you do, when you do, even if you don't, when exercise, I, that's when fine. I do, it's, it's through my nose. And, oh, um, okay. if I, if I have to start breathing out of my mouth, I slow down because mm. I think that's my body telling me that we're at a threshold. Um, and as you start to perfect your breathing, like when I go on fast wrist walks or, um, like I hum in the shower every time and, and towards the end of the shower, it gets, it's, late labored. Like it feels like exercise. Mm -hmm. Like I think you can simulate and Wim Hof talks about this all the time. Like you can, you can actually change the chemistry of the body to be a fat burning process. Um, but yeah, so if, if, if I'm running, like I, I do these little hair and half marathon things every year with my lips taped. And when I'm doing you it, guys, she doesn't exercise very much. And she does these half marathons. Every <laughs> you know, she doesn't exercise very much. <laughs> that's, that's a lot, girl. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't consistently, I guess. That's, I, that's I okay. Power of rest more than I do like, you know, exertion. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a creature of habit because I'm, I'm still in trying to grow my body, which yeah. I know. And it's funny because every time I do take those strenuous hikes and I'm doing OMT at the same time. I feel like I get more fascial release. So there's something to it. Like when my heart rate is up and I am creating this uh, resistance, like my body like moves faster. Like, so I really think people could up their game and, and I definitely at some point will become um, more inclined to do like exertion activities that, mm -hmm. you know, aren't just once a year or whatever. But I, I think, listen to your body. If you get to the point to where you cannot, maintain nasal breathing, slow it down. And it's just like yeah. intermittent, like it understanding like high intensity interval training. Like it's, they know it works. And I think if you use your breath as an indicator that it's time to slow it down, bring my heart rate back down. Let me build up my CO2 tolerance again, get oxygen to the cells and then go back in for the next, you know, sprint. Yeah. 
Absolutely. It's a great way to naturally regulate like how, how and it's great exertion. for getting rid of snot. I mean, every time I run with my lips taped, I mean, it's amazing. All the stuff that comes out. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so bring a um, tissue. <laughs> bring a tissue. Yeah. And, um, and when you're talking, do you inhale through your nose when you're talking? That's harder. Um, I, you know, I've gotten to the point where I can't, um, but mouth breathing is talking like, and it's funny, you guys, like I, I did this post on smokers and I thought, okay, so if somebody's willing to mouth breathe, like, let's say that that's their habit, then it's so much easier for them to pick up smoking. And somebody's like, well, I smoke and I've never been a mouth breather. I'm like, dude, your body doesn't know that you're not mouth breathing. Like it doesn't know that there's a substance you're putting into your body on purpose. Like it is mouth breathing. And so it's just this understanding, you know, the biomechanics of breathing. Um, it's a little tricky to learn, but <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. So when I talk, I'm mouth breathing. Yeah. But like, when I'm yeah. done, you know, you do the four, 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 like a little bit of box breathing and you can mm -hmm. re-regulate your CO2. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've now, I, I try to inhale when I talk, like inhale through my nose. I try to inhale through yeah. my nose and I exhale through my mouth. I still sometimes will sometimes inhale through my mouth, but I've, I've, I almost always inhale through my nose. And even when I'm teaching yoga, yoga, like full body yoga, not just face yoga, most of the time I can inhale through just my nose during that whole session. So that is quite a fitness exercise. <laughs> like, but I, I mean, I've been practicing yoga for a while and there's a lot of breath work in yoga, like, um, your nose breathing for the whole class. So, I mean, I've been kind of working on my nose breathing for a couple of decades now. So I, I, I just wanted to throw that in for mostly for <laughs> myself, really. I don't know if anyone else cares about that, but, um, but yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's always space to keep moving with this. It's not necessarily like a done and dusted. Okay, well, I my tongue's through my mouth and I'm chewing hard foods and that's it. I mean, you can't, there's always more space to to improve or just to grow. And um, yeah, I just throwing that in for a little bit of advanced advanced listeners. <laughs> if you want yeah, to start trying yeah, that. Yeah, there's, I mean, um, understanding too, like, when your whole goal is to keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth so you can grow your face, you end up talking less. Like it's all these little bi-relational things. Like I'm getting more pressure. I'm talking less. When I yeah. talk less, I breathe through my nose more. Like when your goals change, you, you innately start to go in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, well, that's amazing. Is there anything that you want to like, plug or talk about that's going on for you or going on with you at the minute that you want to, I know like, you, you know, you're thinking about writing a book. That would be amazing. <laughs> I will definitely buy it. That sounds awesome. One day do it. Uh, <laughs> as I learn, I'll share on Facebook. Um, and if it doesn't make sense now, or not Facebook, TikTok. <laughs> I was like, oh, Facebook. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know I you. Mean, were I'm on Facebook. But <laughs> <laughs> all my early stuff is, is on TikTok. But yeah, just, just go learn. I mean, that's the the number one thing. The more yeah. you learn about all of these different things that are connected, the mm -hmm. easier it is to implement change. And every person that I see in my practice that's on their airway journey, that's what I tell them to do. Take 15 minutes every day and learn about sleep cycles, learn about nutrition, learn about breathing exercises, learn about oral facial myofunctional therapy, learn about yoga. Like every day you commit 15 minutes to can maintain that motivation because yeah. it is a long yeah. game. It's not, it's not a pill and, and you're done. Yeah. And like five, if one of them interests you more or like, just, just, just pick one. It doesn't have to be all at once, you know, just, you want to get a, a foot in there and you'll kind of start going through these different places and it'll keep taking you everywhere that, that you need to go. So so yeah, well, thanks so much, Rhonda. That's um, so you're on your TikTok <laughs> handle is Airway Health. The Airway Champion. The yes. Airway Champion. Yeah. Yes, Airway Health. And Airway Champion. Airway Health matters. I guess I don't know the difference between like username and account <laughs> name. <laughs> yes, but on Airway Health, like you're posting about it all the time. It's super important. Everybody who is interested in getting a better looking jaw, a better working jaw, improving their breathing, improving their teeth, just 
if you're interested in anything in this like throat chakra, any of my <laughs> yogis out here, the throat chakra <laughs> optimization, but from mm -hmm. a more kind of medical perspective, then check out all of her content. It's awesome. It's super good. Like we're always commenting on each other, always like seeing, you know, overlap and stuff. And um, yeah, and like on your link tree on your account, there's a number of cool tools to check out. I'm going to get some of them myself. I've contacted a couple of the companies. I'm going to get some of them myself to figure out how to use them so I can help teach people how to use them as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, but um, check out her content. Before we go, the, the yeah. REM Mastered Sleep Straw, I got it about a year ago. Within 30 days, I was waking up with my tongue staying suctioned to the roof of my mouth. Wow. So it's basically learning how to breastfeed as a 40 year old, but it's, Oh, cool. wow. <laughs> yeah. That, like, so that one, I, yeah, I've seen that one. I really want to try it. That one yeah. looks really good. So it's a water yeah, bottle, it, right? It's, it's a straw. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, so think about how hard it is to suck a milkshake up a straw. It takes a lot of activity from the, the tongue. And this is just shaped like a human nipple would mm -hmm. have been in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Like there's I mean it all sounds super hooky and whatever, but it, it does, works. but it so works, you guys. Like genuinely, like <laughs> it does. Like I, I know, yeah, it sounds weird, but it super works. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's just a straw that you can get. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you drink like two bottles of water a day and it's like OMT passively. Wow. Amazing. That's so good. And so how long did you mouth tape? Or do you still? I still mouth? Mouth. Oh yeah. 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 I tell my patients, I'm like, we're mouth tapers. That's who <laughs> we are. Some people <laughs> sleep with rollers in their hair. Some people, you know, wear heels all the time. We tape our mouths. <laughs> like, yeah. Even though know, I've changed the breathing pattern because my anatomy is underdeveloped. Like I've even noticed, like, um, I, I think I went one morning where I was snuggling my daughter in bed and fell asleep again for like 30 minutes. She's like, mom, your mouth popped open. I'm like, well, was I breathing through my mouth? She's like, no. I'm like, oh, that is why I tape every night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It can still. Yeah. It'll yeah. still. Yeah. Just yeah. because the anatomy, like, the, I mean, you just have to understand when under, you know, under development. Yeah. And so do you side sleep or back sleep or. So my goal is back. Um, I'm doing all this work so I can get on my back and, and get my spine healthy and, and mm -hmm. start to put pressure on the, the back of my like C one through seven so I can promote growth. Um, plus remember again, like if I'm on one spot for eight hours a night, like I'm going to stunt the growth. So, I mean, I think there's a reason our bodies have like this big bony skeletal thing behind us. Yeah. I think it's there to help us protect our organs and the blood flow. Like it's amazing. Like I don't always get to sleep on my back all night long. I'm not there yet, but I always start on my back. And the mornings that I do get to sleep all night on my back, it's amazing. Like I'm just laying in bed and I can feel the blood flow and this pulse and like this amazing euphoric feeling. Um, wow. I've gotten, you know, it's, a, it's really cool. Like it's the neatest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I, I really, I, one thing I really like, I, um, and I kind of, I also relate to you seem very in tune with your sensations, what you feel, your body, et cetera. Like you seem very attuned to yourself. And, you know, I think being kind of more of a pioneer, let's call it that, you know, a pioneer in this space, we're going to need people who are very, very able to notice these little changes or, you know, yeah. all these things. Otherwise you'll lose motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So if you guys out there can't feel it, like you will just, we might feel it a little sooner, but trust me, like just keep going with it. And, um, but yeah, no, it's really cool that you can perceive these things in, in yourself. Oh. So yeah. And you, cool. you start, like I said, be the lab rat, you write it all down. Yeah. Um, and, and the funny thing is before I stopped mouth breathing, especially during sleep, I had no idea how shitty my sleep was until it started to get better. Mm. So I have so many patients where their teeth are tore up, you know, from mouth breathing and low tongue tone. And, um, they'll be like, Oh, my sleep is fine. I sleep fine. I'm like, well, you get up to pee, right? Yeah. Well, you snore, right? Yeah. So you drink, you, you have headaches and dry mouth when you wake up. Yeah. Your short term memory shot, right? Yeah. But your sleep is good. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. I'm kind of thinking we need to revisit what normal good sleep is. Yeah. Because sleep yeah. should not make you tired. I mean, and these people are waking up depending on coffee. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Like, you don't know that you're in a cage until the doors open and you're like, ah, I, uh, should I get out of this cage? I'm in a cage. Right? What? So, follow so. your insecurity. 
Yeah. Follow your insecurity. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And and try to have like a neutral, non judgmental part of yep. it, like a way of looking at it. Like it's doesn't like have a to scientist. Be like, yeah, it doesn't have to be a blame game. It doesn't mean you're bad or someone is bad or wants to hurt you or you, you know, whatever. It's like we can kind of have a detached way of looking at it. Like it's just this is how it is. So we're gonna work on it. We're gonna explore. We're gonna learn. And um yeah, so well, thank you for being such a great role model for that, Rhonda. And um, yeah, it'd be great to have you another time. We, we've got so much more to talk about, I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, it's amazing. And I love what you're doing. Um, oh, again, I would not be 3%ing smiling if it wasn't for you. <laughs> oh, that's I great. Totally. I mean, I mean, I maybe would have gotten there someday, but not nearly as fast as you helped me get there. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's really, really good to, um, yeah, to just have more of a community. I think we need to, to have more people in TikTok making videos about their experiences with this stuff because yeah, yeah, the more we share about it, the more we know about it and the more people will find out there's so many people that don't know still, no. you know, yeah, it's the breathing epidemic. Like it's, it's literally so many people. Yeah, it's and so. It's almost all of us in the Western society. Like, it's, yeah, all it's of us that. Together. Yeah, it's yeah. so. It's such a high amount of people on CPAP and all of that. And um, you know, we need to, yeah, get the message out. Tell everybody, everyone. You don't have to snore. <laughs> yeah, snoring. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And, and it's I, not funny. I, and I'm laughing, but it's not funny. I know. Like, I know. I know. Now that I know what is actually happening to your heart and your brain when it happens, I'm like, oh my God, like I just want to cry. And I watch these videos and these kids are like laughing at their dad snoring. And I'm like, you realize he's suffocating, right? Yeah. I know. It doesn't sound very good for a reason. Like it, we're, we have an, a slight aversion, right? To snoring. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, yeah, there's a oh, cue there. See? Yeah. There's another aversions. Like yeah. if you can't stand hearing someone chew, there's a good chance their chewing is dysfunctional. Like yeah. we just have to learn what these feelings are and, and, and learn to dig a little deeper. Yeah. Just listen, ha have, yeah. If something is like, Oh, I don't really like the way they're like chew. Yeah. Chewing, swallowing. It's, uh, yeah. Maybe there's something to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Rhonda. Well, thank you so much. And, thank um, you. yeah. And <laughs> Thank you for listening and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have you on again another time. Thanks Rhonda.